From an app in Kintone, you can easily start analyzing your data by creating filtered views and graphs. Here we have an outbound leads app. Each record contains contact information for a person at a specific company, a lookup field to navigate to the company's record in the outbound companies app, an associated sales rep, and a lead status. So first, let's take a look at how you can filter out your records. So filtering your data. When you use the filter feature, a list of records will display that meet specific conditions. What may be useful within this app is to see a list of outbound leads that are now customers. So from the record list screen of an app, we're going to click the funnel icon. Under filter, we're going to select a field for your specified condition and then choose the filter condition. So for this, we're going to type out status and click lead status. So we want to display only customers, so we will leave it as includes any of and then select customer. Under sort by, specify the display order of the records. If I had a customer date field, it may be helpful for me to sort by most recent. But for now, we're just going to keep it as is. Let's click Apply. Now you have a view of your current records with the lead status customer. So clicking Apply did not save this view. If we click the filter icon again, you will have the option to save the filtered view if you have permission to manage this particular app, which I do. So let's save this now. And we'll call it customers and click OK. Your customer view is now saved. You can find this view and any other created ones in this view drop down. If you do not have permission to manage the app but would like to save some views that are important to you, filter out your desired view, click the star icon, click plus. Name the view, click OK, and it's now been saved to your bookmarks for easy access. Now that we've created and saved a view using the filter feature, let's go more into what a view is. So what is a view? A view refers to the display format of a list of records. So create views to view your data in each of your apps. You can create a list, calendar, and custom views. So list views display one or more fields from your form and columns. It will display just like it did after we saved the view using the filter feature. Next, there's calendar views, and this shows a calendar with records associated with certain days. And then lastly, we have custom views, and custom views provide a space to enter custom HTML code. Custom views can only be created by a system administrator. So creating a view. Although you can create views from the app like we just did, there are some great features missing. So let's go into our app settings and take a look at creating views from there. Before we do, notice the current views I have in my dropdown. When the app was first created, there was one view called All Fields. This is just what it says. It's a default view that lists out all records and contains all fields in each record. All these fields won't always be helpful, so we're going to jump into our app settings to see how we can minimize what we see in this view. So we're going to click the gear wheel to navigate to app settings. And this is only going to be available to those who have permission to manage the app. We're going to click the views tab. So notice here it lists out all the views we saw from the app and it's in the same order. So from here you can drag and drop your views in the order you'd like them to display. The view on the top will be the view that shows when anyone clicks into the app. And please note the default all fields view, it cannot be moved, edited, or deleted. So that's this one right here at the bottom. So you may be wondering why I have an all view at the top when I have an all fields view. So let's take a look at these settings. To edit the view, you're going to click the pencil icon to the right. Similar to creating a view from an app, you can filter and sort out the record on the bottom here. You can edit the name at the top here. However, there is an added feature by creating your view from app settings. So here you will notice it lists out all the fields on the left, but not all of them display over here on the right.
So from here, you can drag and drop the fields that are most important to you when looking at this view. You can choose the order too. So the reason I created an all view, even though I have a default all fields view, is because not all the fields are important to me, and frankly, it was just messy to look at. So I created a view with only the most helpful fields. So here, as you can see, you could just drag and drop the ones that you would like. So let's hop out of here and take a look at what it's like to create a brand new view. So we will click the plus icon. You'd name the view here. And then we're going to select the type of view that we'd like. So as we talked about, we have list, calendar, or custom. So for a list view, you're going to drag the desired fields from the left to the right open space, whichever fields are most important to you. To change the order, you just click and drag and drop that into the order you'd like. And then to delete, you're just going to hover over the, um, the gear wheel right here and we're going to click delete. Under filter and sort, apply conditions to certain records in your view and display them in a designated order. So that's right here, which I showed you earlier from the app page. And then if you're all set figuring out what fields you'd like to display and how you'd like to filter and sort your data, you can click save and then you'd go ahead and update your app. So for a calendar view, we're going to select calendar view. So I don't have any data in this particular record that would make sense for the calendar view, but let's review how to quickly set this up. So under the date field, you're going to select a date field from your app. So we'll just go with created date time. So this is the date the record will appear on the calendar. So if I was to save this, the records in my app will display on the date that they were created on this calendar view if we were to save it the way it is now. So in the title field, you're gonna select a field from your app to use as the record title. So this field determines the value that is displayed on the calendar. Under filter and sort, you can apply conditions to display certain records in your view and display them in a designated order. And then when you're all set, you'd click save and you'd update your app. So a great example I use this for is my customer content review app. So I filter out to only show content with the process management status as published or scheduled. Then it displays on the calendar the name of the item on the day it is to be published. I also use the calendar view to track my tasks in my task app so I can see what do I have due on a particular day. So calendar views are really great when you have a field with a specific date that maybe you need to take action on. So lastly, to customize a view with JavaScript, we're going to click Custom View. So custom views allow users to create an advanced and flexible view by specifying the HTML content the view will show. So please note, creating custom views is an advanced feature not covered by the basic Kintone support. So for more information, please visit our Kintone developer network, or I'd be happy to get you in touch with one of our sales engineers to discuss some customization. So now that we've gone through those three different types of views, we're going to talk about duplicating views. So you can duplicate an existing list or calendar view to create a view with the same or similar data. So for this, let's navigate back to our app. Select the view you'd like to duplicate. Let's duplicate the customer one we just created. We're going to click the funnel icon now. So if necessary, change the filter and sort conditions to whatever you'd like your new view to be filtered and sorted to. And then when you're all set, you would click save, or if you just want to view the data, you'd just click apply. So duplicating is great if you want the view to display the same fields in the same order. So you're just going to click filter, update the settings, and then save the new view. So it's going to duplicate these fields that are displaying in the one that you duplicated. So next, we'll talk about exporting data. So when you need to export data, you can create a filtered view that contains the records you need to export. 
So if I only wanted to export the record data on customers, I'd open up this customer view. And the only data that would go into the Excel are the ones that show in this view. So once you have that view of fields that you'd like to export, if you have permission, you can click the three dots to the right and then click export to file. So if this uh, export to file option isn't available to you, it just means you don't have permission and you'll need to ask the person who has permission to manage the app to give it to you if you need that data. So next we're gonna talk about reporting with graphs in Kintone. So you're gonna use the graphs tab on the settings page to design graphs to visually represent and summarize data. So graphs you create are added to the list of graphs that users can view in an app. Graphs are live and up to date as data changes, so you can create up to 1,000 graphs. So the graphs and charts you can create are a bar and column chart, line chart, spline chart, area chart, spline area chart, pie chart, table, and pivot table. So there are two ways to create a graph, one from the app, and one from the app settings, as I showed you with the view, there's two ways to do that as well. So first let's take a look at how to create a graph from app settings. So within your app, you're gonna click the gear wheel to the right. We're gonna navigate to the graphs tab. Similarly to view, here you can reorder your graphs, you can edit your graphs, and you can delete. So let's click the plus icon to create a new graph. In the name field, you're gonna enter the name for your graph. So let's create a graph that shows us the lead statuses by sales rep. So we're gonna call it lead status by sales rep. So we're gonna select a chart type. Let's choose column chart. Some types have additional options such as clustered or stacked. So you can find more details on the different chart types in our Kintone Help Center. In the group by field in the level one drop down list, select a field by which to group the records. Use this when you want to categorize and summarize records. By using the date or time field, you can summarize records by month, by the day, and so on. So let's do level one as sales rep. Let's add a second level for lead status. We want to see the different leads they have in the different lead statuses. If you'd like to delete a level, click X and you can clear the whole section by clicking clear all. So note if an item selected by group by has no value, the record the item belongs to will not be included in the summary. And then in the function field, you can select a function that performs a calculation, including count, sum, average, maximum, and minimum. And then in the filter field, you can select a field or fields to filter the graph by to define which records are included. So let's take a look at this data excluding current customers. We just want to see those earlier in the pipeline. So we're going to do lead status does not include customer. In the sort by field, you can leave the default total or sort on one of the levels in the group by field and select whether to display the data in ascending or descending order. And then at the bottom, to enable periodic report, you're gonna select the Generate Reports Periodically checkbox. Then choose how often you'd like it to create a report. So depending on what is selected, you can choose a day and time as well. So periodic reports are generated automatically based on the app data at the time in the frequency defined by a user. So these graphs are saved to the list of graphs within an app, and the 30 most recent graphs are saved and can be accessed anytime. When the 31st graph is generated, the oldest graph is deleted. You cannot change the graph settings after you activate a periodic report. So when you go to do the periodic report, just make sure everything looks perfect before saving that. So since we don't need a periodic report here, we're gonna uncheck this box. Now looking at this graph, I think it would be better if the data was stacked. So let's go ahead and change that up at this chart type.
All right, the graph looks good. So let's click Save. So notice it now populates on, we're gonna update the app first. And then notice that it populates here. Oh, not there. Notice it populates here on our graphs tab. So here's our lead status by sales rep. And then if you click into that, it's gonna display the graph that we just created. There we go. So next let's take a look at how to create a graph within an app. So let's go back to our all view. So from here, we're gonna click the graph icon just to the right of the filter icon. So notice recommended graphs will populate here. If you see one you like, you can just click on the graph and then make any changes that are necessary. And then you just click save or you can apply it to just view it. So to create the graph from scratch here, under design, a graph starting from graph type. Select the desired type of graph. So for this, let's create a graph that shows the distributions of customers by sales rep. So let's select a pie chart for this. All right, this is the exact same thing you saw on the app setting side. The only change is you can't create a, period, a periodic report from here. So in group by, let's select sales rep. You can add levels by clicking plus and remove by clicking minus. For function, we will leave it as count since we want to see the number of customers each sales rep has. In the filter field, let's limit this to only show those with a lead status that includes customer. Includes any customer. And lastly, you can sort but we're not gonna touch that one for now. We'll just keep that as is. So as an end user, you can apply the graph to check it out. If you'd like to save it, feel free to add it to your bookmarks, just like we did for saving a view. If you're an app admin, you can click save as new graph, then name the graph. Let's name this one customers by sales rep. And then we'll go ahead and save. So this graph is now added to the graph dropdown list for all users to view in this app. So for duplicating a graph, so you're gonna open the graph that you'd like to duplicate, click the graph icon, edit any features that are needed, and then once you're all set making those changes, you're going to save that as a new graph. And lastly, we're gonna talk about displaying data to your team. So not only can you have this data listed from the app, you can also add it to announcement boards to be easily viewable and accessible to the entire team. So since this data is on leads, let's navigate to the sales space and add it in there. So only space admins can edit announcement boards. So we're gonna click the edit icon. You're gonna click attach app. Search for the app the data is from. So we were in the outbound leads app. And then select a view or graph from the dropdown. So notice the graphs we've created today will display the views and the graphs that are all in that app. So let's choose this one. Click OK. You can uh, change the sizing here by selecting 400, 600, or 800. So you can edit and change this all later. And then once you're all set, we're gonna click Save. So now the data is displayed on your sales space announcement board for all space members who have permission to the app to see. So no permission to the app, then it will say that they don't have permission to view this data. So this concludes our training on viewing and analyzing data in an app.